Hey everybody, Tony Pellegrino from Gen Right Off Road, and I want to give you 10 tips and tricks before you take your first off-roading adventure. We're going to go through them right now, and uh, I think that you will appreciate this. So first off, I never want you to go wheeling alone. Now, I know this is going to sound funny, but I've seen it happen. Going alone doesn't mean that you have a Jeep full of people. It means that you're not the only vehicle. Okay, so um, ideally you want three vehicles, um, not even just one more, you want a total of three. So minimum, and then you can go on out and be pretty safe. That way if something happens, you got somebody to stay with and somebody to go back. So um, anyways, super important. Um, and certainly if you're going to go out wheeling your first time, um, probably shouldn't be at night either. It should be during the day. So um, bad things happen at night, especially to newer drivers, there's lots of things that you cannot anticipate. You need to get a little bit of driving experience before you venture out there. Next, bring some kind of a first aid kit. There's plenty of them that are available. Um, literally, you just buy the thing and it's all set, ready to go. It's got everything you need in there. And um, you should, at a bare minimum, have something like this. And uh, that way you, you for yourself, you know, lots of people trip and fall, you know, you end up, you know, trying to grab onto something and scraping yourself um, or you're working on something and you hurt yourself. Uh, lots of reasons to have a first aid kit with you, uh, if nothing else, just to keep it from getting worse and infected. So um, you definitely want to do that. Next, bring a jack. So um, there's lots of different types of jacks. This, this looks the most like the one that you've got in your Jeep right now. It's called a scissor jack, and this has a simple crank. This is designed to go underneath the axle and lift up uh, the tire, you know, if you get a flat, something like that. Um, common also is a bottle jack. These are pretty inexpensive at, say, Harbor Freight. And most importantly, do not forget the lock key for your lock lugs. Um, so many times I've been out on big trail runs and there's the one Jeep sitting over on the side with a flat tire because nobody can find the lock lug key. Make sure that's in your center console or in your toolkit, somewhere you know what it is. Mark it so that you know it's yours. So if it gets mixed up with other ones by chance, uh, but you, you definitely want to make sure you have that in there. Total rookie mistake. Next. Bring your tools and recovery kit, right? So um, you're gonna need some basics. Um, really common these days is a soft shackle, but there's also the typical D-ring that you put on the bumper. Um, these are pretty easy to operate. This one's been around a long time. I think this has been on a few trail runs. It's pretty, pretty beat. You definitely need a toe strap, and um, these are super handy. Um, you can use this. Uh, to, to drag somebody all the way out um, if you have to, if they're completely disabled. And then you also have stuff like this, which is designed as more of a, a snatch em strap. Uh, a lot of people call this a bubble rope. And this has some like bungee cord kind of uh, properties to it where it'll spring a little bit so the one vehicle can get a run to yank somebody out of the mud or sand. Super handy if you've never used one of those. And then when it comes to tools, actually let me move some of this stuff back here. When it comes to tools, there's lots of ways to do a toolkit. You can buy a pre-done toolkit, um, kind of like the one that we're showing right here, or um, this is you know one of our toolkits where it's got pockets for the sockets and different wrenches and things. Um, keeps it organized, super handy. You really ideally like to have a dedicated toolkit and you use this kit to work on your Jeep. Um, this will allow you to make sure that you have the right stuff in your toolkit, and then this just rolls up and tucks away real nice. So um, having a soft sided you know, tool bag like this makes it a little nicer, it rattles less, and certainly if it happens to get loose and bumpy in the head, it's not gonna hurt as much. So um, that, that would be my recommendation on that. And then tie everything down. So um, this is super important. Uh, the, what usually happens is, is people have a lot of faith in themselves, probably falsely, 
um, and they say, hey, if I roll over uh, or I'm not going to roll over, so I don't really have any trouble. Um, here's what I can tell you. Every time I've seen somebody roll over, they were not expecting it. And what also happens is the glove box, the center console, everything opens, dumps everywhere. So think about all the little things you got in there, all the loose change. This stuff is going everywhere, including your phone is probably getting chucked out. And that even that's not even a full rollover. That's just like a dump over on the side. So these are um, important things to tie this stuff down. And I mean everything, especially the heavy stuff. Just think about, you know, if you happen to roll over a couple of times and your toolbox gets loose or something big, um, even your cooler, um, you know, it can hurt. Uh, fire extinguisher, you know, a jack, all these things are heavy. And, uh, you know, if you just drop one of these on your toe, it's going to be sore for a while. Can you imagine hitting it in your head? So use good straps, tie it down. Um, there's lots of things out there. Even, you know, like with our cargo rack where we um, separate the cargo areas, at least the bigger stuff is stuck on the bottom. Um, that helps. And then there's, you can use the side rails to tie stuff down. We sell a little hook kit called a lock and load, and that allows you to tie everything down and at least keep it down on the floor. So um, really important. You can see here, here's a picture of us on the Rubicon where you have lots of gear for several days and you really want to anchor all that stuff down. You just, even just so it doesn't you know, fall off and go over the side of a cliff or something. All right, next thing, airing down. So a simple air down looks like this. Um, they're very inexpensive. They're about 15 bucks. And you just screw one onto each valve stem. Um, it'll air the tires down. Now, this is an important uh, piece. The, the reason I want you to air down is it improves the ride and gives you additional traction. Um, now, that said, you don't want to air down too far. If you don't have bead locks, if you just have a regular wheel, a factory wheel, you can safely air down to about 15, maybe 14 pounds um, without too much issue. If you go below that, then you're likely to push the bead off the rim and uh, then, then you're gonna have a problem where you gotta air the tire back up. So if you're not carrying some kind of an air compressor, um, and even if you are, it's gotta be a good one to get a tire seated back on. So um, what you really wanna do is just air down enough and not too much. So a little air down like this is pretty easy. You just screw them on, make sure you've got an air gauge because you're gonna need to check to make sure you didn't go too low. And then there's also this kind of a product, which is, uh, this one's from Curry, but uh, this has got the air gauge and the deflator built into one. So this is pretty slick. You just thread this on and then you slide this back and forth on here and uh, you can see it just travels a little bit and uh, that allows you to check the pressure as you're going and uh, it reads on a digital display here how much pressure you've got in the tire so that's a that's a really nice setup here so if you're if you haven't already got a gauge that's a great way to go um let's see what do we got next disconnect your sway bar so um if you've got the factory sway bar um, underneath, I don't know if you've never looked under there, it looks like this, but it's a solid bar. Um, this one has these little clips that you can undo and uh, you only have to undo one side if you want, but then it allows um, the wheels to move more freely. Um, now it does mean if you get on an off, off camber, it's not gonna feel very good, but for the most part, when you're off-roading, this is gonna help keep the wheels on the ground. Um, Rock Jock, formerly known as Curry Anti-Rock, made a sway bar or makes a sway bar that you do not have to disconnect. It's a lighter rate, but it does require that you put one in the front and the rear to equal the same strength as your front one only had. So um, definitely an option, a good way to go if you don't feel like getting out to disconnect your sway bars. And, uh, but this is a, I've so many times I've seen people get real teetery. It's because they didn't disconnect their sway bars. The, all of their tires would have been on the ground had they just disconnected. So um, another important tip. All right, um, this, is a, this is a good one. And um, a lot of people make this mistake. So basically, um, they start off-road and they're still in high range. And um, a lot of people don't know when they're supposed to sw switch over to low range. Um, 
I try to get over to low range as soon as I can because it's much easier on the, all of the, the driveline components and it also um, gives you more control of the vehicle so that you're not pushing everything as hard. Um, in high range, for instance, if you were to come up to a little climb, you gotta give it a lot of gas. In low range, you get the benefit of the gear ratio and it helps you just give it a little gas and it'll climb up much easier and in more control. Uh, beside the fact that it's not overheating the engine or the transmission or anything else that's having to work extra hard when it's in high range. So you really wanna to get to low as soon as you can. Um, certainly, if you're going to be going uphills or downhills, you need to be in low range. That's, that's going to give you a huge advantage to keep all four tires on the ground and keep you from sliding sideways and getting into trouble because all four tires are driving. So this is an important thing. And uh, like I said, a lot of people forget about this. So I, I really wanna put a lot of emphasis on this that get in the low range, okay? Then if you're driving a newer vehicle, like a JL, even a JK, JL, JT for sure. Um, <clears throat> what I want you to do is you've got two different modes. Drive, which is an automatic transmission mode, and manual, which says M. It changes the D to an M. And um, the, to do that, you just slide the shifter over and it takes you from the regular automatic transmission over to manual. Now, you do have to shift the gears. It doesn't matter. The benefit is um, you now have control and there's built-in deceleration. So this is just like you put a stick shift back in your Jeep. Now when you go down a hill, you can just let off the gas and it will help to hold you from going faster. And you can shift the gears manually by tapping the stick forward or back. It works very good and I highly recommend this. Um, remember, in low range, you're not supposed to go over 25 miles an hour. So if you find yourself um, staying up by 25 miles an hour, then you can go back to high range. But the moment you slow down again, I need you to go back to low range. So um, just, just keep that in mind. Um, and it's also a really good idea to use, go from auto into manual. Really, really helpful. Try it once and you'll be a believer. All right, next and last most important thing is, uh, don't force anything, okay? So say you get into a position where you're trying to turn, you know, you know you need to turn because you're coming up to something and it will not turn, do not force it. In this case, you know, this gentleman was uh, down here and got stuck at the bottom and just kept giving it gas. Well, something's gonna give. Okay, so either the tire is going to move or it's going to snap the axle or the U-joint or something. So um, you have to think very carefully, like, am I ready to ruin the rest of my day or potentially my trip or spend the night out here or whatever that might look like? Because most newer drivers don't have spare parts, don't know how to work on it. Um, you know, you're, you, you've really got to think twice about how hard you push something. And uh, these, these vehicles are not indestructible. They are very tough. But um, when you're in low range and you are pushing it, um, you can definitely uh, break some parts. So it, it only takes two seconds to back up and reposition and try it again. But you should not be cranking the wheel or hammering the gas or bouncing. Those are all things you do not do ever, okay? Um, so th this... Trust me, the, the day that you realize this rule, will you'll be this guy with your wheel sitting on the ground and in big trouble. And hopefully you're not alone. You got other people with you that can either help or go get parts. So the last tip that I'm gonna give you in this series is do not drink and drive. Save the drinking for later on when you're back at camp or at home, that out on the trail is not the place, especially as a new driver, okay? because there's a couple things I want you to consider. Even if you get somebody like me that's way more experienced, if I come up on a guy like this that's broken and he's sloshed, I'm not very inclined to help that guy, right? He's not gonna listen. I'm, I'm trying to help him and he's doing everything the opposite. I'm saying turn left, he's turning right. I'm saying, you know, I need you to go forward, he's trying to go back. 
then those kind of people are frustrating and they don't deserve help. So don't be that guy, okay? No drinking and driving out there. Just save it for later, okay? You need to be fully cognizant of everything you're doing. There's a lot at risk and things can go sideways like that. So there's all my tips. Hopefully that helps you out and get out there and enjoy yourself.